Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. In this week's video, we're going to make some really lovely, simple Christmas decorations using Das Air Dry Clay. Let's get started. I'm completely obsessed with those white ceramics, slightly scandy looking little houses that you can get to set up village scenes or or just have standing on their own. I've got a few things in my sitting room which are along that line. I've got some white house looking lanterns. I've got um, a little village scene under a glass cloche. And I thought to myself this year, under the landing Christmas tree, we have we have three Christmas trees. We have one in the sitting room, we have one here in the kitchen, which is the pets one, and then we have one on the landing. I decided I wanted to do a sort of snowy village scene underneath that tree, because it's always looked a bit kind of plonked there. So I got myself a, a snowy, soft white blanket which I've put down underneath the tree and so far my huge collection of white houses is just four. <laughs> two of them are the lit sort, they're from Ikea, they come as a pack of two and they've got a timer operated LED tea light inside them. Um, LEDs are absolutely the safest thing to use for this, I wouldn't try and use a real flame um, tea light for, for something like this. We're going to be putting these things on top of fabric <laughs> there's, there's no fire break there at all so no just use little battery operated LED tea lights like this. You can get them really cheaply mine came in a pack of six from Wilco's <laughs> £2.50 or something um, so yeah, you can get them really inexpensively. The other two are from Hobbycraft. They're unglazed and they look a bit like those Dutch um, canal side houses. And you'll know the sort I mean with the, the facade that goes up and then it has a wiggly top. Very pretty. I do want to varnish those. I'm going to leave them in their white colour but I'm going to varnish them. Um, I think the idea is that you could decorate them but I don't want to. <laughs> I like that white ceramic house look. But I decided I wanted to make some Christmas tree tea light holders that would fit with that kind of scheme and that I can just sort of dot round so it looks like a little snowy village with pretty trees. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use Das Air Dry Clay. This was a new pack when I started this project. Uh, so I've made three trees and I've also made a little surprise house. <laughs> um, and I've probably used about two thirds of the pack. This is a one kilo pack, I think. So yes, this video is probably a little bit late for this year. We're now on the 28th of December. Um, I have filmed all this footage well in advance, but unfortunately I was then struck down with COVID, so um, hence my voice is a bit... Uh, <laughs> so I haven't actually been able to do this bit and post the video for you. So it's all going to be voiceover but we're going to go through step by step on how to make these lovely, simple, scandy look Christmas tree tea light holders. I'm starting with a papier-mâché cone. I bought this from Amazon. It's 20 centimetres tall. And I'm going to use it to mould the paper clay onto the size of your smallest tree is going to be dictated by the size of the tea light that you're going to use inside. You want to be able to get the tea light completely encased by the tree. This is Glad Press and Seal. It's an American type of cling film. 
You can get it on Amazon. It is not as inexpensive as a normal cling film, but it behaves very differently. It's much thicker, so it's less likely to just tie itself up in a little ball as soon as you take it off the roll. And I can lay it really flat on my cone. And if it does start to stick to itself, I can sort of tease it apart again. And I can smooth it round the cone. I'm just trimming it back here so that I get a fairly vertical line. And I can smooth it onto the surface of the cone. Now I'm laying it onto the table and just completing the wrap by rolling it round until it meets itself. Pressing it down really well, which sort of bonds it together. And then I can trim off the excess again. And then a little rub and it bonds together. It's not a permanent bond but it is a really good bond and will be perfect for what we need. And then I'm just tucking the loose ends down inside the cone so that it's completely encapsulated on that outside and by just sort of pressing it together it keeps it all held nicely. That's going to give us a really good water resistant finish to the cone and enable us to get our dried trees off the cones again. Here's my pack of Das air dry clay. At this point I have only made the little tree that you can just see at the top of the picture so I've maybe used a quarter of the pack, maybe a bit less. So I'm just going in and taking out a lump, mushing it up a little bit in my hands, getting it working and now I'm sort of flattening it out. You can roll it, you can use cutters, uh, all sorts of things, but I was trying to keep this as simple as possible. So I've just flattened it out to roughly the same thickness across the piece. And now I am just wrapping it around the top of the cone. This is probably the trickiest bit, getting that first bit on and sort of adhered to itself. Just needs a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. using my hand to squeeze it down onto the cone. It's very easy to squish it against the cone in such a way that it almost starts to come off the top of the cone, so it's best just to keep trying to put it down onto the cone. I want this to be taller, so I am wetting that bottom edge because it's started to dry out just a little bit. I haven't smoothed this as beautifully as I did the other one, so it's going to look a little bit uh, messy to start with, but nonetheless. Just reiterating that it is the diameter of your tea light that is going to dictate how tall your first tree is going to be. And I'm continuing to add the clay. Now I've put it down onto my table and I'm using my flat surface to help roll the clay onto the tree. I'm 
making sure that I'm paying more attention to the lower part of the tree rather than the point because I, I really don't want to put too much pressure on that point because it will again start to roll it off the cone. Now I'm happy with how much clay I've got on, so this is going to be my middle sized tree. I'm taking a wad of a kitchen towel, wetting it quite well in some clean water and I'm rubbing the surface of the tree. This is going to smooth out some creases, blur the lines where I've joined pieces of clay together and start to straighten the sides much better than I can in my hands with trying to mould it. just using a knife to trim the bottom just just roughly to height I'm not trying to push through into the cardboard or even through the press and seal because I can keep reusing that piece of press and seal I just want to straighten that lower edge which will make it easier to get the cone off once it's dried just use my finger to blend the edges, maybe a touch of water again to help smooth that bottom surface, but you don't have to go crazy at this point trying to get it flat and level. Perfect. Now I am going to leave that to dry overnight. And just as I finished filming, this happened. It's now the following day and my little tree has hardened on the outside. It's probably still quite damp on the inside so I need to get it off the cone now. And I'm doing that by just applying some pressure around the base of the tree on the cone itself without trying to dent the cone because again I can use that cone again. And then once I can start to see an even gap all the way around the, the bottom of the tree I can twist the cone and it should come free. Then I can go around with a knife and just neaten up that bottom edge. And just make sure that it sits flat on the table. Now I'm going to start freehand cutting some little stars into the sides of the tree. And this is so that the light from the tea light can come through. This could be really simple, this could be little circles that you use a cutter for, um, or, or it could be much more complicated. One thing I would suggest though is that perhaps you want to make at least the start of your shape while the clay is still wet so I could have sort of made a little hole with a, a, a tiny cutter or with a pencil or the end of a paintbrush or something just to get me started on my shape 
because trying to cut it once it's dry is actually pretty hard and um, I was starting to get some chipping happening and I didn't want it to chip from the shape of the tree itself it was alright if it chipped off from the star because I was trying to remove that material anyway but it was quite hard going so I, I would suggest yeah, getting that shape started before it's dried while it's still on the cone to give you the support so that having spent all that time smoothing your tree you're not then ruining the shape by putting too much pressure on it unsupported you can see I've just wet the clay where I'm going to be cutting it out my hope is it will just make it a little bit easier to cut into the surface and I found making the point first and then just sort of wiggling the knife blade backwards and forwards was the best way to start trying to make the shape once I've made a hole in through that surface it became much easier and it was more like a carving action and because the clay on the inside was still a little bit damp I was getting a swarf build up so I just have to pop my finger up inside and just sweep that away and then I could come back to the outside and refine the shape of the star again now I've got a sanding pad this is quite an old one and while I'm demonstrating this indoors I did actually take all of these trees outside and give them a really good sand off with this sanding pad and then made sure there was no dust remaining on the surface before I brought them back in and using some Kryla Artists acrylic paint I am now just coating the trees being careful not to fill up the points of the star with paint and just completely coating them all over I did give these a couple of coats and this also helps just smooth the surface out Now I've got some Deco Art Americana Duro Clear Ultra Matte Varnish. This is a really good varnish. I've used it on polymer clay things that I've got out in the garden. Uh, I, I've yeah, used it on all sorts of things. It is a really good non-yellowing, really matte varnish. I've tried other matte varnishes that just aren't. It's, they just aren't matte and they lie to you but this is so I'm holding the trees to make sure I can coat every tiny bit of the trees and then when I put them down on the table to dry I can just pop a tiny bit more varnish onto the point of the tree. And here are my three trees all together in a little group. And with the tea light just going in. And here's my little bonus house that I made. I just literally took a lump of clay and used my fingers to shape it. And then I added the roof and the chimney. And all the other detail is added just using a little cocktail stick. And here is my little scene underneath my tree. So there we go, a lovely, pretty 
pretty simple little project to do. The hardest bit is cutting the stars out, but as I said in the video, I think you could make that easier on yourself by actually doing it while the clay is still wet. I waited until my little trees were dry and then tried cutting through. I think this would even be a fairly easy project for a child to do. Uh, obviously the cutting would need to be supervised by an adult. Simplicity is the name of the game with Scandi inspired decor. But if you didn't want to go forever trying to make these super smooth, which I mean these aren't, and from a distance they look pretty good but, but they're not super smooth. You could actually lean into that texture a bit more, maybe by going at them with a fork while they're drying and creating sort of scratched texture that looks a bit like fur boughs, so that they look more like trees. And you could even wash some green paint over the top, or some gold or silver, whatever fits in with your scheme. But I wanted to go really simple with this. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.